Hi guys, welcome back to Into the Light, a different life story, my show on YouTube and as a podcast with me, your host, Stefan Neff. Today is another fantastic day. First of all, for you to go down there and press the subscribe button, because otherwise you're missing all these beautiful interviews that I uh, conduct where I bring guests from throughout the world who have been there, done that, who have lived through sometimes very dark times and have changed and are now the, the people that they want to be, the, the people who, who bring joy into their own life. They've learned to love themselves and how, what, what beautiful, what more beautiful thing could there be than actually you discovering the true you. So guys, subscribe, subscribe down there and then you will never miss a video. That's wonderful. Today, another day for a fantastic interview. I have got a doctor on a mission. And uh, I thought actually I was a doctor on a mission, but she actually has got that title. So I, I can't I can't take that. She has officially claimed it, doctor on a mission. And I've got Isabel Hansinger with me, who I'm very much looking forward to have on my show. Welcome, Isabel. Thank you so much, Stefan. Thank you for inviting me. Mm. How's the weather in Rotorua? <laughs> Rather wet, may I say. It's the middle <laughs> yeah. of winter, and we have got quite a weird sort of tropical storm coming through. So it's warm, it's humid. And for those of you out there, New Zealand is a gorgeous, gorgeous place somewhere down there on the map. The real word of New Zealand, the real name is Aotearoa. And Aotearoa means the land of the long white cloud. Oh, yeah. That's long a giveaway. Cloud. <laughs> That's a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> so coming from beautiful Europe, um, we have, oh, and, and, well, Europe as in Germany, then I lived in England where it rains and rains and then rains some more. And then I came to here. <laughs> yeah, the rainfall here is twice as much as in the UK. So, guys, <laughs> the cool thing, though, is we've got so many beautiful sunshine hours. And uh, then we've got heavy rain. And isn't that a bit like our life? Isn't that a bit like, like it comes in waves? So whatever negative there is, it comes in waves. And we can just actually learn to, to just roll with the punches surf the wave so to speak yes it rains yes it rains miserably at the moment but so what in a few hours there's going to be sunshine maybe maybe that might be the key message from our interview so thank you very much for watching so that was our interview hey <laughs> okay bye bye <laughs> that's it bye <laughs> No, but you know what that's a really good take home point right there the tide always comes in and the tide always goes back out. And whenever it goes back out, it takes away all the badness and then it brings back the goodness. So just remember peeps out there in the world, the tide always comes in and the tide always goes out. Point number one, tick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, of course. Now, we too know that and we were in the preamble to this to this interview we 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 joked away and that we're actually preaching to the converted here against each other but there was a time in your life isabel where you didn't know about this message or where you maybe knew the message as something that your lips would say but your heart would not believe there was a dark time in your life are you happy to talk about that uh, that's what I'm here for, mm. is to share, so that people don't have to go through this journey mm. all alone. Mm. That we're we're there. You and I are there for them. Mm. And I think that's the reality. It is we all go. You already said it. We all go through that. Depression. One in three of us will have that in our lifetime. It is unbelievable how common mental health problems are from anxiety attacks to to PTSD it is all out there the chronic pain the, there's so much there yet somehow our our minds tell us these lies that we are it we're all alone no one else could possibly understand where you are at and this lie is just so stupid yet I believed it 
And and I'm a doctor for crying out loud. Me yeah, too. Yeah, I yeah, believed it too. And I'm and, a doctor. Like, <laughs> wait a minute. This isn't supposed to happen to us. But first of We're all, the that's fearless right. leader. <laughs> you're so right. Wait, you're so right. We, wait we, a minute. This is wrong. We are bulletproof. Come on. It happens to everyone else, but never doctors. Yeah, about that. About that. <laughs> So yes, all, about that. <laughs> so tell us about your studies. Where did you study medicine? Oh, I did my uh, pre-med in Boulder, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And then I did my medical training in Denver, Colorado. Mm-hmm. And that's where I found out about New Zealanders. Because the New Zealanders always came up in our winter. Because down here, it's it's summer when we're having winter. So I, I met them one day snowing, uh, skiing powder, and I love their accent. I was like, where are you from? And they go, New Zealand. And I go, I have no idea where that is, but someday I'm going to go live there. Cool. And look, uh, and, and looky here. <laughs> and there you are. <laughs> and I there think, we are. So there, we, there you were in Denver. Um, when you were a whippersnapper young doctor, um, what did you want to be? What a family what family practice? You? Well, yeah, family practice. I wanted to to go into family. So practice. from the word but, go, you were sort of a um, a woman who was interested by a lot of fields in medicine. Well, it actually happened when I was five because I had an uncle. Yeah, well, I had this uncle who was an anesthesiologist. And he was the only doctor in our family and he was Cuban and he would walk because my family is 100% Cuban and he would walk into the room and Diolito was his name. Dio is uncle and Julio, Julito. Um, He would walk into the room and he would just brighten it up and it just made you feel, you know, those kinds of people that walk in and you're like, wow, I feel good. I don't even know why I feel good. And I just said to mom, mom said that I said at that point that I was going to grow up to be a doctor, just like my uncle Diolito. So I knew when I was five that I was going to be a doctor. And mom would give me these, bought bought me this game operation. Do you remember that game operation? (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to be a good doctor. I'm not going to hurt anybody. So I started playing operation at a young age. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I will not comment now about the games that we play during real life uh, to, in order to learn our skills. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Um, so well, bottom line is, though, you are, uh, so you, from a word go, family doctor was something that attracted you. But I know that you, that the functional medicine um was really something that later on attracted you. How early did functional medicine come into the game for you? Was that something Great that Denver question. was renowned for? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, so I graduated in, from Denver in 1991. Yeah. And then I did my family practice in Pueblo, Colorado. And then in 2000, my husband and I and our two daughters moved to New Zealand. Uh-huh. And it was in 2000 <laughs> that I got exposed to functional medicine. Uh-huh. I was working with a doctor that did func- that practiced functional medicine that I just start learning, 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 because it makes so much sense. And, and now that I'm, I've been a doctor for 30 years, um, I just see that it's the answer. It's the way we have to do medicine for the future, because the way we're doing it is not working. Agree? The reality is, as doctors, <laughs> we are taught to diagnose illness and then be really efficient in dealing with the illness and the symptoms and helping people who are in trouble. Functional medicine, for those of you out there who might not necessarily know what what this is, actually looks at the root causes of why we get sick, what is happening in our bodies, rather than being the ambulance at the bottom of the cliff. You're up there way before the cliff and putting fences in and are actually saying, nah, why do you want to actually fall down? Um, how about doing something to prevent you falling down? Okay. Um, and that is the, the difference there. And increasingly, doctors who are practicing in the, in the traditional model, let's say that, um, are realizing, hang on, there's so much more we can do. Mm. But it's, it's very hard 
for us here in, in New Zealand. There are some little, little, little tidbits of progress. There are green prescriptions, prescriptions, we call them, where you can actually write a prescription for a patient to go to a gym or to go to a swimming pool, etc., and and do that. And there are the odd nutritionists around. There are the odd yeah, uh, people who, who can help us to put these fences of protection into place. But in New Zealand, we are certainly not well set up. Would you agree there for that? Yeah, not yet. I, I do belong to the American... Uh, I mean, the Australasia Integrative Medical Association, and there are about 50 of us <clears throat> as medical doctors here in New Zealand. But, you know, we're, it's not commonplace and we're not subsidized. You know, I mean, people have to pay out of pocket. Yeah. And that's a biggie, you know, when. Hmm. Yeah. And maybe so here you were basically family physician and uh, suddenly there was this this new kind of little door opening, a window opening to a different world. And that was in 2001, you said. Um, I know that at some stage, well, let's go one step back with me. I emigrated 1996. Um, I married a, a beautiful wife in 1996. We sold our house, emigrated, bought a house, started again. I don't know how many more life stresses you can squeeze in one <laughs> <I> year. <laughs> so we did it all. And um, and it was a freaking nightmare with hindsight. We were stupid and we were young. We were emotionally immature. And guess what? Depression and anxiety and all these kind of things very quickly took a hold of us, maybe to a certain degree self-inflicted. Uh, but self-inflicted because we've put so many hurdles in front of us or so many challenges in front of us. How was that with you? Was there a similar story? Mm, I was, we were 40. I was 40 and my husband was 43. So no, we just knew I was really fed up with medicine in America, you mm. know, and and we just realized, I just remember one day it was snowing and I said to my husband, I am so unhappy practicing medicine in America. I became a doctor to take care of the world. Let's go somewhere else. And so we just, we just jumped in and, and went for it. And now, you know, now that I'm 61 and Michael's 63, we look at each other going, wow, <laughs> the hand of God was on us the whole way and we didn't even know about it because it was, it was just very, it wasn't immature, but it was just not well thought of. But anyway, that's all over and, and we made it through. And luckily our girls are alive and healthy and happy. Beautiful, beautiful, yes. beautiful. Yeah. So uh, tell us though about that darker time. So, so far I can't figure that out. I know mm. we both went through depression. We both went through through some darkness there. When did it hit you? In 2013, um, I just was really unhappy practicing medicine in New Zealand as a GP. So my husband and I talked about it and, and we just both agreed that it was time to give away private practice. So I gave away private practice. I didn't do that work anymore. And we started, we said, okay, let's start doctor on a mission. We have no idea how to do this, but let's start, babe. I said, babe, we got to do medicine differently because he's a trained chef. Um, and so I go, we got to do medicine differently. We got to, people need guidance and coaching and love and mercy and hope and peace and joy. And it's, they're not getting it in a 15 minute consultation. We can do this a lot better. Mm -hmm. And like my, my mentor, Dr. Mark Hyman, who like started the revolution in uh, in the uh, integrative in um, the Institute of Functional Medicine in America? I was like, wow, we could do this. We can teach. So, in 2013, gave away private practice and we started Doctor on a Mission. <clears throat> now, Doctor on a Mission wasn't making any money, so I was doing locum work too in an urgent care and in practices, you know, because you still have to pay the bills, right? Bills still keep coming in. So, so. After, and I was 
by 2014, I was 53, 54. I was menopausal, but I didn't know I was menopausal. I'm a doctor and I didn't even know I was menopausal, okay? I was menopausal, I was a doctor, I was a wife, I was a mom, and I was now a new entrepreneur, which we aren't taught in medical training. And I felt so overwhelmed and I had so much on my plate. I felt hopeless. And what happened was every night I'd get into bed and I'd go to sleep for two hours. And then I'd be like, bing, and I'd wake up just freaking out. What have I done to my poor family? And that went on for 17 nights, two to three hours of sleep. By the end of that, I, I tried to take my life twice in three days because I just wanted it to be done. My life was better gone than to be alive this way. And look, by the grace of God, it was interrupted by my daughter and she didn't even know she was interrupting it. And my husband took me to our pastor. I got help. We, I went to a psychiatrist. Me, I went to a psychiatrist. You know what that thinking is in, in our training. Like, if you have to go to a psychiatrist, you are really not well. And the psychiatrist, who was a lovely man, I loved him. He saved me. He put me to sleep. I, I was like a rabid child, like a rabid dog, like a rabid dog that could, they thought I was on methamphetamine because I hadn't slept. And he tested me for methamphetamine. I was like, no, I, I don't know. I don't even know how to do something like that. But anyway, he tested me. He put me to sleep. And then I woke up after two weeks and he kept me on an antidepressant Prozac. And he said, Isabel, look, you just need to be on this for the rest of your life. And I was obedient. I, I stayed on it. The medical council knew what was going on. The Royal New Zealand College of GPs, God bless them, knew what was going on. They were very supportive of me. I went back practicing medicine as a locum and I was on the antidepressants. But I knew, Stefan, I knew that I knew that I knew that there was another way of taking care of depression that we weren't being taught in medical training. So what do I do? Well, I put on my cape and my superwoman outfit. <laughs> and, I, and I just, I'm like, okay, that's it. Because when I make a decision, I'm like a dog on a bone. You know, I do not let this go. I'm going to figure this out. And so I went on a five-year journey that cost thousands of dollars. And I made so many mistakes. And I discovered the many areas of mental unwellness that aren't being taught in our training. And so I, I took care of all the areas that were lacking in my, in my life because there's a total of 14 of them, but I didn't need all 14, you know? I, I only needed a few. And then now I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I can, we can help so many people <laughs> figuring this out. And so now I'm not overwhelmed. I've got so much peace. I've got joy and I'm way over on the other side and I'm off my antidepressants and I'm taking care of it naturally. Now, every people have, I'm in Facebook groups and people are like, how dare you make me feel guilty about being on an antidepressant? And I'm like, I am not making you feel guilty on an antidepressant. I'm just saying there's another way, you know? I've seen out over a half a million patients one-on-one -on -one in my 30 years. And when people are on antidepressants, some are happy, but not many because of the side effects. So I'm all about teaching people how to overcome anxiety and depression naturally, how I did it and how they can too. And we started a, a Bossy Brain Solution Facebook page that's free and private where we teach people, mm. coach them, you know, so that they can take off and fly on their own. We're just the teacher. 
And so I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I went through this. You know, it was ugly. You know, you know, you've been there. I'm so grateful that I'm I'm on the other side. But now I've made my mess into a message of hope. I think that's so important. And it's it's I, I love it that you talk about this controversy because here you're talking essentially about um treating the some of the underlying reasons that can contribute to depression or sometimes cause the depression and the the somehow the the misconception that by doing that you're poo-pooing drugs that's not what we are saying depression is a nasty beast of a chameleon it, it comes in all kind of shapes and forms often enough it's anger it's resentment but if you actually peel down down the various layers of symptoms they're more or less the same they're always sort of issue with sleep there's issues with appetite either too much or too little there are other there's sort of tick boxes that we can go through as doctors and I think what I would like to say, please, in the first instance, if you have got a suspicion that you have got uh, depression or that, that, that you know that you're in, in a dark place, the first message, please, 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 is A, there is help out there. And B, that the help is not sitting somewhere on, on a high mountain in a lotus position. No, that help is your family doctor, is your GP. Go to your GP and have a really good chat because in the first instance, there might be some very simple reasons that you're really out of kilter. Um, the hormones, uh, Isabel, you, you said the, the menopause. Well, thank you very much. That can play around with you. Um, things like the thyroid. The thyroid gland is controlling how active or not so active you are. If that is out of kilter, you can feel rather down in the dumps. So there are some real biological reasons that your doctor can help you. So you might not have real depression as in, in a mental disease, but you have actually something very physically wrong. You're missing the vitamins, you're missing this, you're missing that. And suddenly, kabing, you have treated the underlying cause and your mood is much, much better. So that's a start thing. So there's certain things, A, the diagnosis, B, um, the, the checking for those biological reasons that are in your body, where your body is out of kilter and that causes depression. So that is, that is one thing. And then we need to say that drugs can be an absolute lifesaver. And mm -hmm. drugs, please, 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 please. That is, we are not poo-pooing drugs whatsoever. On the contrary, if you need them right now, you need them right now. And sometimes drugs are not enough or drugs have so many side effects that that doesn't work. And then there are stronger things out there that, that might be of help. There are some patients who are a real risk to themselves or to others. And there is electroconvulsive therapy. So where, where a small amount of electricity is applied here and, and helps the, the body to reset itself. As an anesthetist, I've seen these cases and I've seen these extreme mm -hmm. cases which got better with that help. So there's a whole range of things that might be needed depending upon where you are on this journey uh, with regards to depression. So that's sort of the overall picture that I want to paint. And none of these aspects is wrong. Let's be very clear about that. None of them. And But you need... You often don't have to insight yourself and you, you are not a medical trained professional. You don't even know what is out there. So start with your GP, start with your family physician. He or she is your best friend and, and he will bet for you. He is, he is your, your partner in crime. So that should be a starting point. So now that we have outlined that, now we can say, okay, let's come back to actually there are many ways how we can make ourselves depressed. There are, how would you do it, Isabel? I would go about, I would, I would eat shit. I would eat processed <laughs> sugar. I would eat processed sugar uh, where inevitably my blood sugar goes up like I mean, a Polaris missile and then crashes down into the depth of the dungeon. Um, 
And that roller coaster is associated with emotions now. That is a pretty good way. I wouldn't, I would try to stay up as long as possible, watch telly, do kind of things to really ref my brain up. And then for a few days, have only six hours of sleep. And that will pretty, pretty well go. Um, I don't drink enough. Um, so water, nah, no more water. But lots of coffee, even late into the night. Yeah. So that's oh, what it yeah. Really, oh, that's, yeah. And then in the morning, drink some more coffee. And then in the afternoon, you're so wired, drink some alcohol. Why thank not? you. You're in thank New you. Zealand. That's four. It's wine that's, o'clock. That's right. So that was just four <laughs> things that we've changed. And <laughs> yeah. with that four things, I can guarantee you that in a week or two, I'm going to be in an absolute foul mood, probably low in mood and feel depressed. That's I can guarantee you that. So you want to create depression? Now I've given you the, the, the how to do it. Prescription. <laughs> You've given them the prescription. That's right. Thank you. Um, so, <laughs> but what we are saying is, well, actually, let's assume that what I said has some grain of truth in it. Would not the opposite hold true? Would there not be steps that we all can take to maybe safeguard us and maybe do something different that we feel better? So, so now that I've said that preamble, I mean, Isabel, how would you uh, start with with someone? I mean, what you what what actually? Let's be honest here. What I've just described that was me for a long time. Okay, yeah, eating I know. shit, a typical doctor most, diet. It's <laughs> most of us. <laughs> Actually, it's that was most the most of us. Yeah. Doctors, nurses, um, and and probably free food. That's it. Vaping. Oh my god. So here we are. Here so I put are. myself. <laughs> I put myself into your into your practice. I'm the old me is knocking on your door. <laughs> There's still a smile, the mild, faint smell of maybe a Chardonnay I had and our appointment is uh, is in the evening. And um, how would you go about sussing me out and sorting me out? What are sort of things that you would look out for when you sort of meet your first, your first client? Why are you here? Why what am I here? Oh, I mm-hmm. feel like crap. I feel so tired. God, I'm, uh, I don't know. It is, I'm working, working, working. I can't, uh, I'm, I'm working long hours because, you know, I need the money. I have so much stress going on. My kids are like treating, uh, no respect for me. Uh, my wife, uh, we have constant rows and money is tight. So I have to work really long hours. I'm tired. I'm so tired. Are you sleeping? How many hours of sleep are you getting? Oh, oh, I go to bed about 12, then I wake up at four o'clock like like clockwork. And, and when every wrong decision I've ever made in my life comes back to me to haunt me. And then yeah, maybe I fall back to sleep and interrupt it till six, seven when I need to get up. Okay. And are you, um, so you're not getting really seven or eight hours of sleep at all not really although although the wine helps i mean i have maybe a few classes maybe a bottle or maybe two uh in the evening um to just make me relaxed and and because you're a medical professional you know what alcohol does to us right yeah I, yeah i know i know you know that it can make us it can ruin our sleep yeah. Right. You know that. So what, what's the underlying reason of your drinking? What, what's caught, you know, what, exactly. what, exactly. what's going on? <laughs> and I are, you you a- I, I, are you angry? Are you guilty? No, no, <laughs> let's go deep, dude. <laughs> you brought it here. Let's talk now. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Now that would then go into the old me would now go into a tirade of anger and resentment and bullying and what other people did to me. And that is right. look what they did to me. And now I show them i will drink a bottle of vodka ha ha that will show you 
and right. <laughs> that kind right. of bullshit. That was so. That was, so your thought management isn't productive. You don't have good thought management. And then we'd also, you know, I would, you know, another thing I would look into is um, adverse childhood experiences. Like, where, where's all this coming from? You know, like my dad, daddy, God bless him, rest his soul. Daddy was like an angry Cuban alcoholic, you know, so that anger, that stress, you know, so I don't know what, but I would ask you, okay, let's talk about your childhood. And I know if you're open, you know, with all that stuff. And those are things that aren't really talked about in a 15 minute consultation because one doctors don't know how to talk about it because we're not trained. I, this is all self-trained stuff because I had to learn it. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah. coming back to, to you guys out there, when, if you, uh, if some of that rings a bell and you think, oh, actually he's right. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's talk to the GP. Can I ask you please um, with the receptionist, make a double appointment. Uh, a Good normal idea. appointment is 15 minutes and in those 15 minutes we can't go uh, a bit more in depth uh, even even just for the diagnosis of depression and the management of it so you need a double appointment number one number two is your doctor will do will have a lot on his hands to or her hands to to sort you out what we have discussed here um, you just those few questions that you did were snippets that I had probably over a four week period in my rehab. So this is not something where you so chink 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 tick yeah. tick tick tick, <laughs> and now you're cured. Go home. Oh yeah, you're blessed. No. Blessed. <laughs> it doesn't work Microwave like that. Microwave perfection. <laughs> Now we're talking Isab years. <laughs> Isabel is good, but she's not that good. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's what you need to see. There is there is actually so much going on, and these kind of of uh, a stepwise approach needs time. Uh, behind me, uh, that one there, that is steps to sobriety, and my new version, the new new edition, uh, is coming out on the nineteenth of August. So exciting times! And in there, I talk about that, and I talk about about how you go about seeking help and having these in depth discussions. And one of the things I say is. Please give yourself time. Uh, do where do you meet someone and talk to someone? Um, it needs to be in a protected environment because you, you, the walls have got ears. And, and and for me, the important bit was whenever I had an hour of such an in-depth discussion, I was drained afterwards. It, it was, takes energy to communicate. Oh, absolutely! It takes a lot of energy to communicate. To communicate, but also communicate with yourself. You are raising things that were buried by tons of alcohol, sugar, and whatever addictive substances you could load onto these memories. And now you suddenly ask me to think about guilt and shame, where they come from. You think about where, what is really causing it. And then you are going further back and you're going into my childhood, something that I tried to forget for a hell of a long time. And suddenly, mm -hmm. in any of these questions, there might be a trauma coming up as if you just scrape some of the skin and suddenly a big amount of pus comes out. You can't just keep going somewhere else. You need to deal with that pus here first. And that is, that is where this journey will start. What, what Isabel is taking you on is a journey. And that journey is a journey of self-discovery on the one hand. And because you need to work on the underlying problems that are causing many of your behaviors and, and reactions to your environment. Mm -hmm. And then she will take you on a journey of putting the safety stops in. And that is, I think, so important to say. So this is not something, do a 90 minute consultation with Isabel and you are cured. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I wish. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. And here's my magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. You can't see it, me neither. <laughs> And okay. it is really constant course correction every day. Cause I, yeah. I mean, I have to control my thinking and that's the problem with people. Mm. 
they don't know that they have to be controlling their thinking. They don't have to ponder every thought. And if it's a negative thought, you don't have to ponder it. You don't have to keep it. You, And that, I didn't learn that in medical training. Did you? No. No, no I know. Me either. <laughs> There's a lot of things we need to learn in medical training to help people. So anyway. But that is that is like a, a, a specialist um, education in its own right. So for those of you who are not sure about medical training, you go 13 years to school, then you go seven years to or five to seven years to university and become a doctor. And then you do five to seven years of a specialist training. So basically a quarter of a century, you're sitting in a school. Um, then That's you're a doctor. All. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing really, you know, just get it over. And done <laughs> so, but the last seven years of specialist training. So um, I've done um, free specialist trainings of diff different hats that I can wear, but um no, very few of these specialist trainings go into what we have been talking here. This, this self-discovery, this self-love, these kind of things. That's more something that you would expect from a guru somewhere or from, I don't know, someone who teaches you Tai Chi and gives you breathing exercises and that's it. This, and that's that, that kind of wrong kind of picture. This is not, you don't have to wear saffron robes uh, and, and do that. No, you have to be aware that you're a human being and that there are a lot of stupid thoughts in your head that they come from sometimes your childhood, sometimes from other, other experiences that you have had. And it's time that we explore, explore them, expose them, expose them for the lies that they are. And that is exactly what Isabel is talking about. You're, and that's where you have been very carefully, actually, and very efficiently, very fast, been going through in those those little simulated uh, discussion. So, so far, what you have done is you have looked deep in my soul where things are coming from. But now you were saying, okay, now we actually put a plan in place. What are sort of the things that that you would discuss? with uh, a numbnut like me, who should have known better. After all, I knew exactly, I could have given you every single detail what the alcohol does to me. Did mm -hmm. that stop me drinking a liter of vodka? Nah, not at all. So my mind knew it, but how would you go about changing me? Um, first, I would just say, give you the statement that you're not stuck. You know, you don't have to end up where you are right now. And are you aware of that? Do you know that you can be unstuck? Do you want to get unstuck? Nice. So you force me now into taking control and taking action, which is a very powerful, powerful thing to do. It's no longer those out there are in control, but do I want to be in control? Very nice. Do you want to get unstuck? I Remember, do. you're still my patient. <laughs> I do. I do. Actually, right. I do. A bit. I do because otherwise, I would have not made contact with you. I'm so tired. I'm so. I'm so oh, exhausted all the time. No, I, I okay. need to make a change. Okay, so you're here, and there's stuff we need to do together to get you there. But what's your there look like? I want you to tell me what your there looks like because we all prep. We all go. And we all have a mind map, like where we're going, you know, like you decided you were going to be a doctor. And so you began, began that journey and it was hard and ugly and messy. And I know. So what, where do you want to go? Where, where, what's it look like? I want to be and nothing, nothing's, nothing's wrong. Everything, just whatever you want. I want to be happier. I want to sleep. I want to be not as angry. I don't want to be as, if you can just stop these dreams, these four o'clock in the morning uh, nightmares. They're not gory nightmares. It's just like the proverbial sitting in front of the class with no trousers on kind of a thing. Um, weird shit that goes through my head and wakes me up at four o'clock virtually on the dot. And I just, I just, I, uh, I'm so tired. I'm sick of my life. Okay. 
And then we would begin all that, you know, then we'd start uncovering. First, get your sleep under control. I would check your hormones. Somebody like you, I would do um, a hormone test. It's a salivary hormone test for your cortisol because something's going on at your, you might have high, high cortisol. So we'd need to get your adrenals under control. Um, and then also <clears throat> there's a lot of beautiful uh, adaptogenic herbs like uh, ashwagandha. You could take ashwagandha before you go to bed um, and magnesium. We, we work on your sleep hygiene. You know, what, what do you have in your bedroom? Do you have a TV? Do you have a router on at night before you go to bed? You know, all those, the sleep hygiene, which is probably another podcast because I could do an hour talk on sleep. Wow. Exactly. Exactly right. But I love it because of what you're doing, Isabel. You're on the one hand, you're autopilot, you're dealing, you're, you're ticking things off where you know sleep is my problem. So you work with me through those things that I can very easily put in place. So there is that. But you're also hunting for the underlying reason. If we were now to, to keep going in this role play, the underlying reason that I wake up at four o'clock in the morning, thank you very much, is my PTSD, which had not come out or I was not aware of until about two years ago. Um, but throughout most of my life, I, the reason I was such a good doctor and so switched on and constantly switched on was because I was freaking hypervigilant, which is part of PTSD. Great. <laughs> so, yes. So there is that. And that's, that's where you see where the interlinking is. You can talk right. about healthy things until the cows come home. If you don't do something about the underlying reason why you are the way you are, you will not get very far. Now, can I just ask you a question? Sure. Do, do you come from an alcoholic family? Yes, that too. Yeah, well, us, you and I, that come from alcoholic families experience PTSD because we're like, what's next? What, what, when are they going to flip, flip out? When are they going to freak nice. out? Because we're walking nice. on eggshells all the time. Nice. So, so just so you know about that. Oh, so true. And I had so many of my, my uh, previous guests were um, daughters or sons of alcoholics and... These are called the silent, the silent generation, because the kids learn to to shut up and be constantly aware because they don't know if mommy is happy or mommy is going to slap them. Um, so that is so true. See, there are so many aspects there, and we have already looked at those kind of things. So to to buy yourself a book to say, oh, this I can make you sleep, and there are sort of the tick boxes that you deal with your sleep hygiene, and then you're going to sleep. You haven't looked at that side nah that will not work in my case i looked well i did a bit of the sleep hygiene um but the key was there i was dealing with the ptsd i had some hypnotherapy uh and it sorted me out bang i was no longer having these weird dreams i have them from now and then because once every 10 nights is a shit night that's normal Everyone has that. So that's okay, the odd night, but not the constant one. So that was my example here where I dealt with the underlying reason, the PTSD. Over here, though, if I still watch telly till late in the night, drink a coffee late at night, be dehydrated and all that, I will not sleep well. I can do what I want. So mm -hmm. that's the reality. So that's these two things that's constantly ongoing. And and Isabel, you, you had a really good example there where you took took me apart. So she's good. She's good, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, mm. All the applause goes to my journey. That's all. <laughs> I was like, wow, I've got a lot to learn. So I, and I keep learning. There's so much. And another thing I wanted to kind of share was that you know, I really want to get rid of this idea of mental illness. It's not mental illness. It's we got to take care of our brain. It's brain health. You know, when if you and I have chest pain, we go to the doctor and he does an ECG and they do bloods to make sure we didn't have a heart attack. OK, they're looking at our heart. The heart is an organ. If we do have a heart attack, we don't feel guilty or shameful or we're a bad person if we've got a heart attack. <laughs> Diabetes 
if you've got diabetes, you're placed on medication, endless medication, and never really taught how to reverse it. But that's another talk. Yeah. Um, but people don't feel shameful or guilty because their kidneys and their pancreas aren't working well, and they've got di and they've got diabetes. Well, the same goes for our brain. Our brain controls our body, and we need to start looking at all the areas of brain health that are causing our unwellness and stop calling it illness because it's not mental illness it's brain health that needs to be corrected so that's another mission of mine on doctor on emotions just helping understand don't be shameful of your brain health that's not in tip-top form that's we can work on that it can be helped if you want if you you got to come to the table teachable and motivated right that's, that's the problem and that's the problem with most of us for us alcoholics 95 percent of us think that there's absolutely nothing wrong with us because that's what the alcohol that's the lie that alcohol tells us or makes us tell others and it convinces us so well that we actually really believe that and therefore we are not ready to take in any messages that are maybe leading to that you shouldn't drink as much or shouldn't drink at all. So that's the reality. Now, it's the same with depression. It's the same with many other, uh, other thought patterns that are probably not so good for you, let's put it like that, rather than use mental illness or something like that. Um, so therefore, it's, it's really, really important to, to take that in and accept that, that, hey, it's okay not to be okay it's is, exactly exactly and it doesn't matter if you're a doctor it doesn't matter if you're an engineer a ceo of a, of a top fortune 500 company you have still got the same one in free chance to have depression so it's just as much given here you are you have got insurances for whatever rare events yet when it comes to an event that is probably like quite likely, like you are ending up in trouble mentally, you think, oh, no, 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 no. So reality is, it's great. If you, if you are here in this show now, listening to us, because you are so uncomfortable in your skin, because you, you feel that there could be a better you waiting out there to be discovered, welcome. Welcome, welcome onto a journey that can be so powerful, so brilliant. Ah! And <laughs> Isabel has lived that journey. She did it. She was in the dumps. She was not a happy girl twice in the United States. Then she, she emigrated, i.e., you could say, maybe ran away from that life, <laughs> created a new life. Fair call. Sometimes it's good to run away. That's absolutely. You leave those things behind that no longer suit you. Um, so you could actually say that going onto a new path and, and running away from the old you is maybe not such a bad thing. But just, just yeah, but it still caught up with me. The old me was still with me. I still had that junk. So you don't, yeah, you got to deal with stuff. <laughs> the baggage, yeah. You're so yeah. right. You're so right. So no, there you are. So no, that's, that's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it is, and it just shows, it is such a multifaceted kind of thing. So when you talk about functional medicine and when you engage with people like Isabel, um, don't think that they just give you a few herbs here and there and then you're going to be just fine. Nah, doesn't work like that. The herbs will be there, rest assured, um, because herbs and natural things can be so beautiful because there's so much in our modern diet. Well, you, you yeah. You should really, when you go in a supermarket, you can forget the tea at the end. Dye is probably more realistic when it comes to 90% of the, of the food that you see in a supermarket. Highly processed crap um, that is <sighs> essentially um, not conducive for your health and shouldn't be really be called food. Um, and that's really important to say because your body is such a fine-tuned, gorgeous mechanism yet we feed or we don't feed it what it needs. And that's where the herbs, the minerals, the micronutrients, macronutrients come in. And that's where exactly the, the, the 
um, Isabel can lead you onto a change and into a complete different lifestyle. And having gone through changes like that, <laughs> having rearranged my life, I swear to God, I swear to, on anything, on the Bible, on whatever you want me to swear on, it is as if someone switches on the light. Remember I when I said, I'm so tired all the time? Sorry, yeah, no longer the case. Yeah. I feel tired from now and then, like yesterday, yeah. I wiped out because I did four hours, five hours of hard physical work. And thank you very much. Yes, I was tired afterwards. That's normal. But no, no longer this intrinsic, uh, uh, I don't want to live anymore. No, I wake up and yes, life is good. And that's exactly because someone like Isabel took me by the hand and said, well, actually, man, get your shit together. And here, this is what you need to do. So I eat yeah, yeah, a handful of, of, nutri of, of, of things, let's call them like that. Um, there's some vitamins in there, micronutrients, herbs, etc. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful together with with a, a good healthy diet wow and i'm sure your mitochondria are very very happy because now <laughs> they can produce energy for you exactly <laughs> so so isabel if people want to get hold of you if if you ring a bell uh with people how can they get hold of you we'll be putting it in the show notes right it's yeah. all down there, so, but you for those who learn a lot via auditory. And sure, via, sure, sure. So. so there's there's three places. One is um, I've got a, a private Facebook group, um, and this is specifically for women. Sorry, because men are a different kettle of fish. I'm sorry, but hey, I've, I've got, got one X chromosome. Face Come on, <laughs> that must count for something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a private Facebook group called the Bossy Brain Solution. And you can just Google Bossy. Well, you can just go to uh, Facebook and just check it down Bossy there. Great solution, yeah. It's in the and then also, and then also we've got um, we've got the doctoronamission.com hmm. website, and then we've also got our podcast, Chef Michael and I. It's called the MD and Chef Team. Perfect. Kapow! Perfect. Perfect. No, that's wonderful. And today in this interview, Isabel and I gave you a bit of an overview with regards to what really functional medicine is and, and what Isabel, what you gorgeous woman have learned through Thank some you. hard times yourself and come on this onto this amazing journey. And you're just so much further down the line than most other people. And that is beautiful. So and just I love it that you say that you're still on a path, that you're still learning, because that's that's really the gorgeous thing, isn't it? No, nah, it's fine. But sort of forever. Really, <laughs> well, exactly. And we never know where this winding path leads us. There is just so much waiting out there. Now Today is um, is number one, interview number one. What Isabel doesn't know yet, um, surprise, is that I invite her back because we need to go far more into details. Oh, with, we're going to uh, go deeper. Oh, yes, please. And especially the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the nutrition, the nutrition. I can't just... Exactly, exactly. The, the reality is we can't, we can't just, can't just, oh, by the way, there is nutrition. Let's talk five minutes on nutrition. That doesn't okay. work. Okay, I'll do, I'll do, I'll do a, a two minute training session. Okay, we do okay. two minutes on so, that, but then we need to get, come on, you're married to a chef. For Christ's sake, is there not I know. a message waiting there in far more oh. detail? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, Chef Michael is amazing. And I'm so glad he came on board. I'll never forget the day he was like, OK, I'm really going to help you out. And he got his culinary nutrition expert certificate. And he came in. I came home one night and he was cleaning out all the cupboards of plastic. And I go, what are you doing? He goes, we can't have plastic. And I go, yeah, I know. <laughs> And so he replaced it all with um, with with glass, which is really good. But I just wanted to share uh, my three plates system 
for keeping your blood sugars nice and stable. So imagine your first plate is in front of you and your first plate is your, your macronutrients. So you wanna make sure that you've got a balanced plate of food of macronutrients, which is your good carbohydrate, your good protein and your good fat. That will lead to the next plate, which is a balanced blood sugar. Yeah, you want balanced blood sugar. You don't want what Stefan was talking about going up and down. And then that will lead to balanced mood. Three plates, you're in charge. I love, I like, I like it a lot. No, that's brilliant. And that is, that is the start of a journey. It's as simple as that. Yet, when most of us look at our meals, they might not necessarily look like that. Or they might look rather like a mountain. <laughs> that could quite be too. So, so there are a number of things that we need to talk about. So, Isabel, you're so much invited back to my show. Where we talk specifically a bit more about the, the nutrition side of things. What we put into our body. And that includes the herbs. That includes things that can be of benefit uh, to you. And which gives you that balance, because that is really what our body is all about. If you, I give you the example, if you wanted to have a really, really beautiful food, as a chef, you go for balance. You look for the bitter, the sweet, the sour, the salty, umami, the fifth, uh, the fifth taste, and you put all of them together in a nice ratio. Now, different ratios for different cuisines, um, and but when you do that, your body says, wow, what a beautiful dish. If you put too much of one thing, salt, 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 salt. Ah, sorry, thank you. That won't do the trick. But if you get the balance right, you have got a masterpiece. Oh, yeah. That's exactly the same when it comes to your normal nutrition. Your body will appreciate it. Not in a taste sense. Oh, that tastes nice. But in a soul sense where your body says, oh, that's nice. That's nice. And it's not nice because you've eaten a whole cheesecake. <laughs> it's just nice for 20 minutes until you feel That's sick. That's right. From, then you're like, blah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. So that is what we want to talk about. And for that, watch out for interview two with Isabel Hansinger. Isabel, you're a gorgeous woman. Thank you so much for being on my show. Um, thank you for sharing all these, these really good insights because they are so, so, so important. Thank you so much. Thank you. And you guys out there, look after yourself. And, and you know, think about who do you want to be when you grow up? It doesn't matter if you're 17 or 70. Uh, it is you have got a choice. And you've, you've made a start listening to this interview. So now, what kind of little change do you want to do right now? One little change, not more, not more. One little change. You can do it, guys. Look after yourself. Bye. Yeah.